Hi there. Our topic for today is how can we predict if a reaction will occur? So some things that you will need to have with you in order to participate in this lesson, you need to have a reference table J, otherwise known as the activity series. I'm going to teach you how to use that. You should also know the definition for the word spontaneous. Spontaneous means that that reaction will happen all on its own. So spontaneous combustion is something will burst into flames all on its own. All right, to orient you to table J, it's listed into two different columns. We have metals and we have non-metals. They are both ranked from most active all the way down to least active. I'm going to highlight a couple things for you on this chart. In the example we're about to look at, we're going to compare zinc to copper. You will notice that I've cut out little pieces of the table. I didn't have enough room to write it all, but you have it there right in front of you. So in this case, zinc is more active than copper. Okay, we have two versions of nearly the same reaction. We are mixing some zinc solid plus copper oxide, and we are predicting that its results might look like this. We would have what's known as a single replacement where the zinc would bump out the copper. We then could look at another version of that reaction where we have copper solid mixing with some zinc oxide. We would predict the products would look like this. Again, it's a single reaction single replacement, excuse me, where the copper is trying to bump out the zinc. Now, one of these reactions will happen, and it will happen in a spontaneous way all by itself, but the other one will not, and it will not make product at all. We have to be able to predict which one of these is going to happen. Now, the rule for redox is that if the more active metal is the one that bumps the other thing, then your reaction will happen. But if it is a less active metal, less attractive somehow, okay, and it's trying to bump something that is more active, that is not likely to happen, okay? Metals have sort of this hierarchy of things. You may be with someone right now and there's only a small handful of people in which you would abandon that person for. Metals have the same sort of scenario, but they like publish the list to everyone. They say, listen, if I get with lithium, if lithium is anywhere on my radar, I'm gonna allow that to happen. Whereas if I find someone like copper who's way down at the bottom of that list, that's not really likely, okay? So the zinc, because it is more active than the copper, is able to take those copper plus two ions that are here, and it bumps them. So the zinc starts out with a zero oxidation state. Through the reaction, the copper becomes zero. The zinc now becomes positive two. And the oxygen is just the spectator. Since it is the zinc that's getting more positive, and it is the zinc that is more active, this reaction will happen. But in this example here, where the copper starts out as an oxidation number of zero, okay, now in this case, it's the copper that's becoming more positive. In order for the copper to lose electrons, it has to be the, it has to be the most attractive out of all the metals that are there, and that is not true. In this case, the zinc is much more attractive, and so this reaction is actually not going to happen at all. So since the Cu is not more active than Zn, we will have no reaction, or we could say it's not spontaneous. So it's not spontaneous, and so we're going to put NR right here, meaning that no reaction will happen, okay? So when the thing that gets oxidized or gets more positive is more active, more active gets oxidized, more active gets more positive, then that will be spontaneous. 
but if the thing is not more active and it's trying to be more positive, that will not occur. It will be non-spontaneous. Here's another example. I have potassium. It's mixing with rubidium chloride. Through the reaction, the rubidium gets booted out of the relationship and the KCl forms. Another way we could look at that, what if we had rubidium solid trying to mix with potassium chloride and would the potassium get booted? We are going to need to look at table J. And let's see, I can rewind mine here real quick. The rubidium is the one that is more active than the potassium. So the rubidium must be the one that gets more positive. All right, zero plus one minus one, zero plus one minus one, zero. Okay, now we just said rubidium is more active, but it is the K that's getting more positive. Hmm. In this example, the rubidium is still more active. And through the reaction, the rubidium goes from zero to plus one. Okay, so since rubidium is more active and is getting more positive, this one is spontaneous. But since rubidium is more active, but it's the K, the less active, that's getting more positive, this is not spontaneous. And so what we can do is we can get rid of these products because they will not happen. Okay, and we have one last thing that I want you guys to take a look at. We're going to use this chart right here to predict whether or not this substance will form a reaction. Now you'll notice that I have no reaction written in four of these boxes. The copper, when it reacts with its copper ion, it has no incentive to trade electrons, so we're going to write no reaction right there. The same thing is true for the magnesium, and you'll see that all the way across the diagonal. Now, in order for the copper to boot the magnesium ion, okay, the copper has to be more active. So I'd like you to look at that all the way through. See if you can find an example where copper is the more active metal compared to some of these ions. And I would like you to complete the chart as best you can. I'll give you a hint. There should be six that will have a reaction. Please bring this chart filled in tomorrow and we'll check it and see how you did.